Hi there and welcome to Spreadsheet Solving. In our video today we are going to discover how the index and match functions when combined serve as a very powerful tool and we will walk through an example to see exactly how we can use the index and match functions to perform an act that in fact VLOOKUP cannot do. Okay, so let's understand what the index and match functions are first, and then we'll take a look at that example. Okay, so we have a video on the index function already, so if you want more details and um, a better grasp of the index function, take a look at that video first. If not, you can stay tuned here because we're going to go through a quick review. The index function, what it does is it will return a value based on three things based on a data range, row number, and column number. And so, if we want to set up the index function, we have an equal sign followed by the function name index. First argument is the data range, the second is the row number, and the third is the column number. Okay, so keep this in mind. This is the index function. Now, match function. What the match function does is it will search for a specified value, or a specified item rather, this is something that you set up, and it will return the relative position in a given data range. Okay, so if we were to set up the match formula, we have the equal sign fo followed by match. There are three arguments. The first is the lookup value, that is the specified item. Okay, the second argument is the data range, which we have right here. And the last is an optional match type. And I would recommend that you use zero because what zero does is it, it searches for an exact match. Uh, the other two options are one and negative one. And that usually takes place when you have, say, an ascending or a descending sorted data range. So we're not going to cover, we're not going to go into details on that. Uh, in this video, but keep in mind for the third uh, argument, keep zero for now because we want an exact match. Okay, so we have the index function and we have the match function. How do we combine the two? Well, as you see here in the description, the match function will give you, it will return to you the relative position. In other words, you can use the match function to return the row number. So here we have in our index function, we have row number. Here is indeed one of the arguments that we can replace with the match function. So in essence, you are replacing the row number with the match function, and that will result in a pretty powerful formula. Okay. So now that you have here the basics, we're going to take a look at our example. Okay, let's take a look here. You may have seen this already. This here in our uh, index video, we have a list of our top tennis pros, uh, female and male, along with their rank, birth date, and pro year. Now, what if I have the names of two stars? In this case, we have Djokovic and Murray, who played uh, in the finals of the Australian Open this year. And let's say that we want to know what their birth date is and their rank. You will notice that both of these data sets, the birth date and the rank, are located to the left of the pro name. So we cannot use the VLOOKUP function because whenever we use a VLOOKUP function, the output has to be to the right of the name. And that's not the case here. Now think about it, you might be saying, well, hey, if that's the case, why not just move these two columns, rank and birth date, over to the right of the name? And yes, I agree with you, you can definitely do that and then use the VLOOKUP function. Uh, but that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is, let's say there will be situations when you don't have the flexibility of moving columns to the right of the search entity. And so when that is the case, you can use the index and match function. Okay, and even if that weren't the case, I, I just suggest that when you know what the index and match functions 
are, you have an extra set of tools that you can use. Okay, so let's dive in. We can use the index and match function here. Now, I'm also going to specify what the row and column number here is so we can see exactly how we're setting up these formulas. Let's start with the row number. As we described earlier, the row number will be, uh, the return of the row number will be based on the match function. So essentially, we are going to use match and search for Djokovic's name. And the data range that we're looking at is column C. And finally, the last optional argument of is the match type, so we'll include zero as the exact match. When we click enter here, this output is the relative position, or in other words, a row number. Click enter and we see that 81 is the output. If we scroll down here, to row 81, we do in fact find that Djokovic is located on that row. So there you go. This match function served the, its right purpose. Now the column number will be zero, and I'll explain why in a, in a moment. We are going to set up our index function here. With the index function, the first argument is the data range. And in this case, our data range is the birth date, which is located in column B. The second argument is the row number. So we're going to reference cell H2. And the last argument is the column number. And here, let me explain why we use a column number of zero. It's because in our data range, we only highlight one column, which is the birthday column. So we want the return to be that column itself. We don't want it to return any other column. So we keep that at zero. So at that point, if you click enter, we have a birthday of May 22nd, 1987. And if we want to check that result, we go down to the 81st row. And indeed, we find that is the case. OK, perfect. Now. What if we want to know what his rank is? Again, we could set up the same column, or rather set, set up the same formula, except we'll have a minor tweak. Now the row and the column will be the exact same thing. So we're going to copy this right here and paste it right here. And you'll see again right here in this formula box that we use the match function to reference Djokovic's name within the same data set, which is column C. So row 81 is correct, and we're going to have also a column number of zero. So when we set up our index function, this time our data set is not the birthday column, but it's the rank column. So we have column A, followed by the row number, and the column number. So at that point, if you click enter, you know that the rank is second. And if we want to confirm that, we'll check that one more time. And indeed, the rank is number two. So here you see we have used the index function that in fact references a row number which is made up of the match function. And that combination there allows you to search and return the information you want, which happens to be to the left of the search entity. OK. Great thing is, once you have the formula set up, you can copy everything. Click. Uh, I've just um, hit Control C on my keyboard. Now Control V. I'll do the same thing here. And because we have everything set up correctly, uh, we can again double check and know that Andy Murray is the fourth ranked, born May fifteenth, nineteen eighty-seven. So if we check here, row 113, May 15th, 1987, number four. Okay, so here we have it. Quick summary. We today have learned the match and index functions. We use the match function to determine what the row number is, which in turn is used within the index function to provide us with information. And once you have formulas set up correctly, you can always copy and paste them and that provides you with flexibility and uh, speed. OK, so here we have it, an example of index and match. OK, we'll see you next time.